morning and welcome to Masterclass Cook Along. It is the weekend. I have got another fabulous couple of recipes for you that you can cook this weekend with your friends or your family. So this week's recipe is salmon. It's going to be glazed in miso. Now miso is an Asian fermented soya bean and it's, it's basically, it's kind of like Asian marmite. It's umami, it's salty, it's kind of super deep in flavor. Um, so you want to kind of balance it all out. And I thought, well, let, let's go Asian, fresh, light, vibrant, but super easy. And then I'm going to throw in a little cheese dessert for you that you can make while the salmon's in the oven. Super easy today. So first thing I wanted to do is show you a really interesting salsa that works with the salmon. Okay, so bear with me. Right, it's a watermelon salsa. I know. Bit weird. What do you think, Emily? Yeah, that's weird. It's a bit out there, isn't yeah. it? It's a bit out there. But it works. We're going to pickle the watermelon first. So the acidity of the pickle cuts through the richness and the oily salmon and the miso glaze. It's amazing, okay? Now, I've got a little piece of equipment here that will make life so much easier, and it's not expensive. Masterclass have come out with a new manual vacuum packing system. And you get these resealable bags, so they're reusable, okay? Can you see that all right, Emily? I can. And you get this little valve here that you can suck the air out, you've got a Ziploc system, and then you've got this little hand pump. So normally with vat packing, you'd have to pay 50 to 100 pounds for a vat pack machine, buy the single-use bags, whereas with this, they're reusable, really low entry butt level, you can get them on cook, serve, and enjoy, deliver to your house. Really easy. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, is we're going to take the watermelon. Now I've got it already cut into chunks. So if you don't want to buy a full watermelon, just go to the shop, buy a little snack pack and do it that way. So we're going to put the watermelon straight in. Now, as a flesh of the watermelon, it's very porous. So it's going to absorb the vinegar really, really easily, which is great because then we end up with this really tangy flavor. So I've got some white wine vinegar. I'm just going to pour that in. Now, if you want the full recipe, go to Cook, Serve and Enjoy and you'll find it there. So once the vinegar's in, we're just going to seal the bag up, making sure we get any of the first lot of air and then push along the ziplock like that. All right, and that seals the bag up. And the only way air can get out is in this vent here. So you take your pump, you place it on the valve and then you just draw the moisture. Sorry, you don't draw the moisture, you draw the air out. And once you've drawn the air out, that will then force the vinegar in. And I'm going to let that sit while we make everything else. And then the final thing we'll do is just bring that salsa together nice and quick. So let's just pull that to one side. A little bit of vinegar there. Right. Okay. So that watermelon is just going to sit there. Is there any other melon you could use? Do you know what? You could use any of them. The only reason why I use watermelon is like the texture of the watermelon is very open, isn't it? Mm -hmm. More than sort of cantaloupe and honeydew and gallia. Yeah. And they're quite a closed texture, and I think they take much, much longer to pickle. Um, so watermelon, I mean, it's quite easy to get hold of. And honestly, if you don't eat lots of watermelon, don't buy a massive one. Just buy a small, you know, pre-packed or snack pack, and then you've got just enough to do. And it doesn't keep for days and days and days, even though it's pickled because it's quite a delicate fruit. You know, just make enough for dinner, maybe the next day and then that's it. So, now we're gonna turn our attention to the miso, uh, miso marinade. So, I've got some brown sugar in here, um, and then I've got my red, you can get red and white miso paste. I've gone for red because I like the deep dark color, but the white will work equally as well, okay? It's a really handy thing to have. We actually stir this into Caramel instead of salted caramel. It's amazing on vanilla ice cream. Really, really good. It is good, isn't it? But it's a great marinade, this, because it's got real oomph, real umami flavour in there. Then we're going to add some soy sauce just to help turn this into a sort of a paste, a looser paste. You could use light or dark. It's entirely up to you. I'm just going to mix that together. And then I'm just going to grab a little bit more vinegar. 
So I'm now just going to add a couple of splashes of vinegar. Now I've got a white wine vinegar here. You could use red wine vinegar or rice wine vinegar if you wanted to say it's all really authentic. And then we're just going to mix that together. Okay. So you've got sweetness, you've got tangy, you've got deep and dark flavours in there. It's a balance, and that's very much what Asian cookery is about, is getting that balance of flavours, sweet, salty. If you wanted it hot, you could add a few chilli flakes or some fresh chilli into there. No Does problem at all. Would it work on any of the would it work on any vegetables? It would work beautifully on cod. You know, a nice firm white fish, it would work well on. It works great on salmon because it's kind of rich and oily. So you could do it on mackerel, that's an oily fish as well. You know, you could do it, um, yeah, and, and you could do it with some meats if you wanted. It would go great. I mean, chicken carries lots of flavours. You could do it on tofu if you wanted. Um, I've got a friend who makes lots of sort of vegan style um, meat alternatives using, um, oh, what does she use? She uses 100% gluten. And it turns it into like um, sata, Satan, she calls it. Satan, yeah. Not, yeah, Satan, not Satan, Satan. <laughs> um, so you could marinate, you know, vegetarian things. It would work well on cauliflower. You could roast a whole cauliflower, marinate it up in that. Or you could do cauliflower steaks, that would work really well. Okay, so I've got two pieces of salmon here. I went to the fishmongers and they didn't have a full 600 gram piece, which is what I wanted. So I got two pieces. Um, and can you see here, Emily, where this bottom piece of the salmon is? Yeah. That's actually the belly, and it's half the thickness of this bit. So what I'm going to do is a little tip, is fold it underneath, all right, like that, so that you've got a thicker piece of fish, and that means that piece won't overcook as you cook it, all right? So I'll just rinse my hands a little bit. Little top tip for you there. <coughs> and then I want to get the flavour into this salmon quite quickly. So I'm just going to, without any weight on the knife, use the sharpness of the knife. Can you see how gently I'm putting into yeah. that knife? I just want the flavour to penetrate into the salmon. Now, I don't want to cut it into pieces, I just want to open up the fish. And then we're going to take our marinade. Now, you could make more of this than you need and store it away um, so that you've got it. So midweek, you could have you know, some salmon with noodles and stir-fry vegetables and this in under 10 minutes, all right? So it's, it's worth having something like this in the fridge for a busy day, midweek, when you're doing school runs and cooks and scouts and guides and all those busy things that you can be doing, you know, late home from the gym, this would be a great sort of post-workout dinner, wouldn't it, Emily? It would. It would. It smells lovely. It's, it's really intense, this flavour, and it just works. I think sometimes salmon can be a little bit bland and a bit, yeah. ugh, salmon. Whereas this, I mean, just look at that. I mean, it's dark and rich and intense looking now. And I'm just going to let that be just for a couple of minutes before I put that in the oven. I'm actually going to baste it again after about five minutes in the oven because I, I know this flavour works so well and it needs more, but if I put too much on now, it'll kind of just fall off the fish. So we'll cook it five minutes, put a bit more on, and then get it going. But that will only take about 15 minutes in the oven. So we'll leave that to one side. Okay, now let's get back to our watermelon. Okay, so I've taken all the air out. The vinegar has been forced into the watermelon, okay? And then we will just pour it back out and then we're going to chop and make this salsa. So leave the vinegar in there because we'll use a little bit of that for dressing. I can wash that back bag and use it again, all right, which is brilliant. So let's take a little bowl here and then I'm going to cut the watermelon into little pieces. So why would you do this? Why would you cut it afterwards? I wanted, if you, if you put the vinegar in after you've chopped it all up, it gets too vinegary. Right. So if you imagine the vinegar has penetrated into the edges of the watermelon, it's it. not right into the centre, so you get that kind of nice mix. Yeah. Some milder pieces, some really tangy pieces. 
And they just think it, I've done it both ways and this is the nicest way. And you get a really rounded pickled flavour instead of a, oh, that is pickled. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you taste the watermelon rather than just the You vinegar. taste, yeah, rather than the vinegar. Whereas if you do it like this, all you'll taste is the vinegar and you've kind of lost the character mm. of the watermelon. Um, I, I mean, I've served this to quite a few people before and they're like, watermelon? Pickled, and actually they're loving it once they've tried it. And I think it works, it's perfect for barbecue. Mm. You know, it's that perfect antidote for fatty, smoky, rich grills, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Works with pork, works with beef, works with fish, works with vegetables. You know, you could char grill some pumpkin or something like that. And that really sweet flavor, and maybe put some spice on it and then serve it with this and it just cuts it. Good with halloumi as well, this. Mm -hmm. You could actually pickle it in lime juice as well if you prefer a, a sort of a more acidic, fruity pickle. Some people don't like vinegar. Yeah. People, but they like sort of lemons and lime juices and I would pickle this with lime juice if you love it. Really nice. Right. Couple more pieces. I'll do these and then that's it. Now, if you've got any questions about what we're cooking, Please do post them in the Facebook feed and I will answer them. And if I can't, the team, a masterclass will definitely get back to you. Um, all our recipes are on Cook, Serve and Enjoy website. And that's a website where you can purchase any of our equipment. Um, I've been working with this company for three, nearly four years now. And I just love all, why there's thousands of products there. Um, that all help you make amazing food in your kitchen. That, with our recipes, makes for some tasty dinners. So, in with our watermelon. Okay, so we've got enough there to get us going. We'll just get rid of that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it into that bowl. Gives me a little bit more space. And then let's get rid of that vinegar. And then we're going to add some shallots. Now, if you've got shallots, you could use red onion, but don't use white. It's far too strong, okay? So, nice, mild, kind of sweet shallots. These are a decent size. Sometimes you get really small ones. Just do a few more. Let's do a little slicing lesson. Now, I've cut the shallots in half. And can you see that there, Emily? Mm -hmm. That's the core. That holds the shallot together while you're chopping it. If you chop your shallot there, it's just going to collapse halfway through your chopping and that's really when you run the most risk of cutting yourself. So, I'm just going to slice. Now I'm not slicing up and down. I'm slicing diagonally towards me. So I start beyond the shallot and I cut down. Okay, so it's a diagonal motion and then in to that point there. Which camera are we on Emily? We're just up here. Up here. So you can see I've left that bit there. Yeah. I'm not going to cut that bit. I'm going to leave that so it holds it all together. And then just pinch it like that. It's that motion. Hold the shallot together and push the knife away and down. And that means you'll get a really nice curl your fingers away underneath themselves. So there's no risk of you cutting your fingertips. And then just push forwards and down. And that means you will cut the shallot into lovely little pieces so that then when you add it to the salsa, you get a nice rounded flavour instead of a, all I can taste is onion or shallot. So we'll do that once more. How much red onion would you use? Just a small red onion. Yeah. So I've got two decent sized shallots there. Um, and if you like it really oniony, put some more in. You could put spring onions in or green onions or shallot. Uh, scallions, depending on where you're from, because let's be honest, people watch this program all over the world and everyone has a different name for a spring onion, a, um, a scallion or a verino. So it's up to you. Make the recipe your own. So we're going to cut through again and there you go. I've left that little, what is it, a centimetre at the end, which is holding it all together. Pinch it and push. How many times have you filmed me chopping onions as we grow? Huh? <laughs> Far too many. Chopping onions and squeezing lemons and limes. Yes. You spend a lot of time doing that. 
Okay, so slice in there. But once you can chop, I mean, I use I use edge keeper knives from Masterclass. They come with a sheath that sharpens them, which is great. So I know every time I pull a knife out, it's sharp. Because there is nothing worse than a blunt knife. It's dangerous, it's useless. And you'll just end up cutting yourself because you won't glide through something. Is there a, a preferred knife that you would use for... Uh, obviously, it's all come in different shapes and sizes. I think it's what you're comfortable with. So if you're choosing a knife, you need to be comfortable with that knife. You don't need to think, I must have that massive big chopping knife that the big chefs have. They only use that because they're comfortable and confident with it. And when you're comfortable and confident, you're safe and you're efficient in your chopping. So I'm using a little Santanko knife here. Sometimes I use the eight-inch cook's knife, sometimes I use a paring knife. Um, different jobs, but you don't need 20 knives. I would go, look, a Santanko, eight-inch cook's knife, paring knife, should be fine. Okay, so in with our shallots. Okay. They're actually quite strong, these shallots. <laughs> I'm almost crying. Right, I'm just going to put that to one side. Let's just take this salmon. It is marinated for five minutes. I'm going to put a little bit more on, and then I'm going to put a touch more on before it's cooked. Good. There we go. You could marinate this up in a, a, a reusable bag as well, which would work really well. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven now for 15 minutes at 170 degrees. That will not take long at all. That'll be really good. Right, a little bit of coffee. Okay, back to our salsa. So I've got a beautiful bunch of fresh coriander. Look at that. That is just, oh, it smells amazing. Now the leaf is very delicate. Not a huge amount of flavour in the leaf, in my opinion. But this stalk here bags and bags of flavour. So Emily, just have a smell of that before I cut it. Yeah? It's, a, it's so fairly, yeah, wait till I cut the end off. So if I take this, can you see this here? Uh, we'll leave that elastic band on a minute just so that you can have a smell of it now. Now I've cut the ends off and that's the bit. How wow. it's just opened it yeah. right up wow. by just getting rid of the stalks, get rid of those little bits, just trim a it's centimetre off. Bit. And I'm going to use this bit in the salsa because it's going to give me crunch and it's going to give me bags of flavour. If I put the leaf in there, the acidity is just going to flatten it out. Whereas the stalk, it will hold its own. So I'm just going to slice it up. I want about a tablespoon of stalk. No more. Because otherwise all you'll taste is coriander. Okay, and it needs to balance out. So in goes the stalk for now. A little bit of olive oil just to balance out the vinegar, so you're kind of making a dressing now around it. Okay. And then we're just going to give it a quick mix together. And we'll add a little bit of the coriander leaf right at the end. Okay. Okay. So what, what else would you use coriander stalks for? Oh, coriander stalks. Always use them in your curries and your chilies. Use them in the cooking process, the stalks and then use the leaf at the very, very end. And that's where you get that lovely, fresh, vibrant flavor. Whereas if you put the leaf in, in the cooking process, you'll just lose it. But the stalk is robust and it will take the cook, okay? So there we go, that is our pickled watermelon salsa. It's lovely, that. It is, honestly, pickled watermelon is the way forward. Right, let's just wipe this down and then I've got a super cool little dessert for you. Can we just move the salsa a little bit up? Yeah. Okay. Down there? Perfect. Okay. So, I thought I'd start showing you some little cheap desserts. You know, because I always forget about dessert. Especially during the week, and I just think, oh, let's get the ice cream, get the fruit out. But I forget. So we're going to make a dessert today. Quick one, really easy. And it's inspired by the store cupboard, if I'm honest. So, when I was a chef, um, I was what, about 21, 22, I worked in this beautiful bakery, I loved it, and we used to make this delicious, simple, banoffee pie, if I'm honest. And I thought, well, I can't just do the same again. 
What can I do to make it, you know, just a little bit more yum? So, rather than just a biscuit base, I thought we'd go for a Jamaican ginger cake. Now, I grew up on this stuff. This one and the golden syrup cake. And I thought that is going to go really well. I'm sure it's this camera. Kind of this one? You can see what, yeah. Um, it is just really dark. Let me open it. It's just really, really dark and sticky and oh. it's parkin-y, but it's a bit it, darker. It's a, it's a childhood cake, that I think. It is, <laughs> and it's just... Oh, just smell. You smell that, it'll take you right back to being a kid. Mind you, that's not that far back for you. Uh, I, I, even though... <clears throat> oh, it smells incredible. Okay, so we're going to take this cake. So this is going to be the backbone of our dessert. All right. Now, I've got a little bit of um, silicon baking sheet here, the reusable stuff. I'm just going to sit that in the bottom just to make it really easy to get out. You could use cling film if you want to, parchment paper or foil. I'm just using that because it means it's reusable and I don't have to use a single-use plastic. And where I can, I'm trying to do that. So we take our cake and we're just going to cut it straight down the middle. Now I'm using one of the Masterclass um, Smart Ceramic Bakeware tins, um, the brownie tin actually, uh, and I'm just going to press the ginger sponge down, try and fill the gaps, okay? So we've got that really intense base flavour. And then if I grab a spoon, I should be able to just press it into the corners a little bit. Now, when it comes to caramel, condensed milk makes the best caramel. Does it not? Yes. There's something about it. Let me show you that one. So there are many ways. You can now buy this as caramel, so you don't have to make it yourself. Um, you can boil these tins for about four hours in a pan of water, which to me is far too much effort. Um, but what you can do is you can now buy the evaporated milk. No, it's condensed milk, isn't it? You can buy the condensed milk, you can pour it into a tin or a, a heat-proof dish, cover it with foil, put it in the oven for an hour, and it will come out like this. Just remember to leave it to cool right down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the guys at Masterclass to post the recipe on our Facebook page on how to make this caramel. Because once you can make that, that caramel, just popping it on a little bit of ice cream, into your roulades, you know, on tea cakes, possibilities are endless. You could mix a bit of that miso paste with that. It would be amazing. All right? So we'll post the recipe on this. But for today, we're just going to take the caramel because this is a quick store covered one. So this is already made as the caramel. And we're just gonna spread it out. Can you see that all right, Ooh, yeah. Are you getting hungry? Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a good one, this. My kids are gonna love this. Absolutely love it. So, spread the caramel on there. And then I'm gonna take a little pinch of salt because we've got a quite sweet set of flavours here and a little bit of salt, just a tiny bit. I use a nice Malden sea salt for this sort of job. It's probably like half a teaspoon there, maybe even less. With the table salt, like. Yeah, but you've got to be even more delicate with it because it's tiny little grains. Whereas with sea salt flakes, you get like little pieces, little yeah. flakes, which is nice. Okay, so bananas. Good way to use up any leftover bananas. That are going a little bit brown. These ones are all right, actually. They're not a problem. So we'll get rid of the tops. They can go into the compost, and then open it straight out. Get all your bananas out. You could also do this probably with apple, cooked apple. I was just about to say, it's like yeah, it's fruit, it's fruit. a bit of cooked apple would be nice. Actually, I'm going to do four bananas because they're a little bit small. These ones. Yeah, you could do it with some cooked apple. You could probably do it with um, some cooked pineapple would be really nice, or even tinned. You know, drain the tin off, maybe put it in the pan, caramelise the pineapple up a little bit, 
with some of the syrup. Oh, that'd be nice actually. Why do you agree with that? So I'm just going to slice the bananas up. You want a nice thin layer, okay? Thinner the better, I think, for this. Yes, yeah, so you don't want big chunks of banana. No, it's what it's about is, is that amalgamation of flavours and combinations of this dish. Bananas, caramel, ginger, cream, all good things. And then straight in. Alright? And then just push them all down so you get that nice single layer. Alright? Press it right down, get it to the edges, because it's going to be covered in cream in a minute. So it's not going to oxidise, but you do need to be quick. Right, so I've got some cream here. I'm just going to whisk this up. I'm going to add a little bit of caramel. Just to sweeten it up and help the cream firm a little. Right, there is our cream done. Not too over I don't want it sort of pipey texture cream. It needs to be a soft pink. Because we're going to add a little caramel in just for... Good measure, because why not? And then stop with the whisk, and then move on to the spoon, all right? Because what we don't want to do is over whisk this and continue to whisk it. We now just want to take the cream and the caramel, look at that, marbling together. That's good, that's what we want to see. Just that little bit. I'm not going to over mix this because I quite like the idea of it sort of being marbled a little bit. Yeah, not necessarily caramel cream, but yeah. cream with caramel. That, to me, is alright. I like that. Okay, so, before these bananas start to turn brown, straight in with the cream. Oh, this looks good. There's some good noises coming from this studio today. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good day to be in the office. Yeah. <laughs> It's a sinful day today. Right, so just get all that cream off your spoon and then use the back of your spoon. And because I've put the cream in the centre, you're pushing it out to the edges, all right? So that you don't end up with any skinny bits. You want a nice, even layer. There we go. And then I'm going to do that because Why not? I want like little waves. Yeah? Nice. And it is, it's simple, it's delicious, and it, it's inspired by the store cupboard, but that's okay because sometimes we have to cook from the store cupboard, okay? So let me just put that to one side. I've got a few little chocolate buttons here, don't tell the kids I need them. Uh, let me grab a knife. And then I'm just going to chop them up into little pieces. Oh, you know, if you've got a bar of chocolate, grate it. But I haven't. All I've got is these little chocolate buttons. But you'll get like little nuggets. And because this is dark, sort of 70% chocolate, it'd be quite nice. It's quite nice sort of bitter contrast. So I'll just scoop that up. Can you see that all right, Emily? I like that. Yeah, it's not oh. coming off your radar, this, is it? <laughs> there we go. So that is my Jamaican ginger sponge banoffee pie. Perfect, ready to go. Just needs an half an hour in the fridge. Well, to be honest, you could just tuck in right now. So let's have a look at our salmon because I think it's probably ready. Right, let's have a little look at this. Oh, oh. that smells good. Right. There we go, and then get, get your lens on that one. Ooh. Looks good, doesn't it? Yes. So you can see the glaze, it's just all kind of soaked into the salmon. I've even got a little bit more here. I can just put some fresh on there as well. You don't need, you know, there's nothing in there that needs cooking. It's soaked into those little score marks that we made on the salmon. There we go. Just let all that sit there. If I get a fish slice, I'm going to be brave and I'm going to transfer it onto here. You see that, Emily, all right? Is that where, uh, yeah. where it needs to be? So, because we've used the Masterclass Smart Ceramic, it's non stick and it works really well. And it allows me to cook things straight on. Look at that, no sticking at all. And this is. 
pretty sticky, cooked on. So it's, it, and it will come it's clean. It's a really good dish, sorry, uh, cooking tray for this job. So I'm just gonna put that on there because I have to use two pieces of salmon, but that's okay. And now we've got some coriander. Now I'm gonna use the leaf, okay? And I'm just gonna chop that nice and gently. Now when you're chopping soft herbs, don't do that, because what you're gonna do is bruise them and they become bitter very quickly. So use your knife and push through the herb. Use the edge of the sharp knife to cut through the herb, not bruise it, all right? So nice, gentle chop, so that you get the full flavor of the coriander and the delicateness of it. Take our watermelon salsa and just drop it in at the very last minute, all right? And then let's mix this together. Does the salmon all right there, or do you want me to move on to the board, Emma? If you can move it onto the board. Nice you my mind. Okay. Now I've had this on the plate. There's a salad. I've had it in a wrap, which was delicious. Um, and I've just sat and eaten it any which way you possibly can, and it really is delicious. So right at the last minute, <laughs> serve it up. Particularly if you know if you've got friends and family, don't put the salad bowl next to it because they won't eat it. They'll be like, oh, it's watermelon, I'm not having that on my fish. Put it <laughs> on the fish, make them try it, all right? Promise me, you're gonna make this, put it on the salmon, force them, without them knowing they're being forced, to try it. <laughs> okay? Oh, that looks There great. we go. So that is how to make an amazing miso glazed salmon with pickled watermelon salsa, and I've made a cheat, banoffee pie, for lunch or dinner, whichever you prefer. Have a great weekend. Make sure you cook this because it is absolutely delicious. The recipes are on cookserveandenjoy.com and please share this video recipe with your friends and family because we want more and more people to get into the kitchen and cook some of our great recipes. I'll see you next week.